nuclear bombs, one-turn research, it's 2300 BC. But this is just the way the world works. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Bread, the lord of drinking tea and exploiting games. And once again, you find ourselves in Sidwire Civilization 6, as I'm going to be showing off some of the fastest and strangest ways to achieve a science victory with the creative use of exploitative game mechanics in your games of Civ 6. I strongly recommend grabbing a couple of friends after you see the demonstration in today's videos and absolutely desecrating your sacred friendships and bonds with each other. After all, what's the point of friends if not to mentally destroy them with completely overpowered and broken game mechanics? Oh, I love friendship. It's fantastic. And after all, if you run out of friends, then don't worry, simply buy some more. Or start a YouTube channel and then you can just summon hordes of your followers to absolutely smash in almost all multiplayer games. It's fantastic. Anyway, today we're going to be playing a couple of fun, unique games of Civ 6 where I'm going to be showing off some unique mechanics and how they can mesh together with exploits in order to create some very unique situations in gameplay. So without further ado, I think it's time we dive into this glorious video of Civ 6. So make sure you of course sat back, relaxed and you have a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea in front of you. Remember, anyone detected drinking coffee whilst watching this video will have the red coat sent round to their house and forcibly brainwashed in the tea conversion chambers for a full week. Ah, it's just the way we have to do things I'm afraid. So for my first fantastically balanced experience of Civilization 6, we're going to be looking at probably the second best faction to get a science victory with. Now who on earth could it be? So how do you think Spiff's going to get a science victory today? Do you think A, he's going to play his career and spam out a bunch of campuses? B, he's going to somehow pull off a science victory with no science production whatsoever? Or C, the game's completely and utterly broken, good god, please help Spiff, he found something, it's, it's too powerful to be left alive, oh god, I mean, how are we even meant to fit all of this text on screen? Does it even make sense anymore? It doesn't matter. Vote down in the comment section below. And my goodness, you're going to be surprised by what actually happens. Now, of course, the best science civ in the game is probably Korea, with their absolutely ridiculous science bonus if you were playing a normal game of Civ 6. However, provided the Korea player in your game isn't going to be doing an exploit I'll show you later, you can actually pull off a science victory oh so much faster than Korea, as quite simply, Alexander of Macedon. That's right. Right, this Civ, which all of you thought was entirely based on early game wars, is in fact an absolute meme powerhouse of exploitations and science production. Now, Alexander has some basic science advantages to go alongside him, including receiving some free Eurekas and inspirations whenever things happen in your empire, but you know, they're pretty boring. However, the much more exciting bonus of Macedonia is the Basilicoi Pedis. Don't worry, I'm English, I'm allowed to mispronounce these things. It's a complete completely unique building for Macedon, and whilst it does provide some nice bonuses for land units, we don't care about that. Instead, we care about the fact that every single time a unit is produced in this city, 25% of the unit's production cost is given in science. That is ridiculous. Absolutely stupid. And there's a couple of reasons why. Early game units like the Warrior, costing only 40 production, aren't actually that exciting. 40 production isn't particularly anything to write home about, and especially when only 25% of it goes to science, aka 10 science, you're not really going to be able to exactly sustain an entire economy science production off of the back of one warrior. However, later in the game, units start costing things like 580 production. Now, 25% of 580 is actually a decent portion of science, so all you have to do is produce those units fast enough to outdo your opponent's science production. And that's exactly where today's exploit comes into power. So let's dive into a glorious game of Civilization 6 where I'll be showing off how good old Alexander of Macedon will not only give you a very ridiculously easy conquest victory, but also an absolutely crazy science victory to go alongside with it. If you ever wanted to simulate the glorious experience of arriving on a colonial border where you have fully working AK-47s and your opponents have just mastered sling-based technology, then this is the perfect exploit for you. Now you join us on a a pretty standard game of Civilization 6. My empire hasn't particularly got off 
to the best of starts, it's turn 31 of a standard length game and things aren't particularly looking too amazing. Now on turn 31 we also finally got round to actually being able to choose a Pantheon and that's fantastic news for us because a Pantheon is where our exploit's going to start happening. Now on our shores here we have fishing boats, pretty basic resources, each fishing boat provides one gold and free food. Of course we know there's a Pantheon which provides plus one production from fishing boats. Now this is very nice. The more you're going to be able to duplicate this Pantheon the better but of course there are a few other things you can do before you get this exploit off. Make sure to definitely grab a couple of free builders in your capital because you know that'll help with any economic plans you have and then it's time to start bashing out the production on those fishing boats of yours. Already just with two boosts the settler production has shrunk to three as each fishing boat is now giving us two production however we need to do this a lot more. Now you join us a fair bit later in the game it's suddenly turn 114 and we're in 50 BC. Now in 50 BC something relatively unique is happening. We are producing 101 science per turn. Now that's actually pretty high for where we are in the game but honestly that science is almost entirely coming from the fact that we have one city over here just spamming out campus research grants. Yet that doesn't actually explain why in 50 BC technologically speaking we have researched gunpowder whilst our closest rival has recently finished research of the lumber mill. This has put us in a bit of a distinct military advantage and if we wanted to go for a world conquest we could probably defeat all of these nations simultaneously in a war. But world conquest isn't actually what I'm interested in. Instead it's using the 25% science growth from our glorious basicloipedias, the pronunciation is different every time you're just gonna have to deal with it, in order to break the science system in the game by building units. Now as it's only 50 BC and I haven't been able to get too much research done, our best cost effective unit to produce in terms of science output is in fact the legendary and fantastic caravel, clocking in at 240 production and only costing one turn to build. Now seeing as this city produces 327 production and effectively all of my cities produce over 240 production each, we are able to build this caravel ridiculously quickly. Now as each caravel has a production of 240 and we get 25% back of that in science, that means for each caravel built we are receiving 60 science. What that means is each turn this city produces 60 science, so does this one, this one, this one, and this one already produces 60 anyway even without the caravel. So that means whilst the game is actually believing we're only producing 101 science per turn, we're actually producing around about 300 science per turn. Now whilst this is nothing in comparison to Korea with an exploit I'm going to be showing off later in the video, this is still completely broken considering you also gain the largest navy in the world because of it. Equally, this exploit can be broken even more thanks to a couple of handy bonuses, one of them being the fantastic Venetian arsenal, a lovely building which basically means for each time a naval unit is built in a city, a second one is immediately built. This is very useful because it means instantaneously you duplicate and double the science production of a city, so if Alexandria here builds one caravel, we don't get 60 science from it, we get a 120 science from it. 120 science per turn is more than all of these empires combined. But what happens when you have a city like Dion over here which doesn't actually pr have 240 production per turn, so is consequently not able to spit out a caravel every single turn, which is a disappointment. Well if that's the case, don't worry ladies and gentlemen, simply go down your civics tree and write down here an exploration which we're ridiculously close to getting, we have the fantastic press gangs. Now press gangs are relatively unique because they provide a fantastic bonus of plus 100% production to industrial and earlier naval units. What that means is instead of the caravel costing 240 production to build, instead the caravel costs 120 production to be built, meaning a city like Dion can spit out a caravel once per turn. It means we can slap down a city right here and almost two turns after it's built it's able to spit out a caravel per turn, and a city here, and a city here. The sole reason being they have fish or crabs in the local area, and because of how we stacked our pantheons using the lovely pantheon exploit, we're gaining 53 production per fishing boat. In our capital we have three, so that calculates out pretty nicely, in Dion we have two, so that also does quite well, but then we get a city like Alexandria, which thanks to some magical genius has 488 production. This isn't even its maximum. Thanks to my glorious religion we have a fantastic bonus where for each person following this religion in the city you get an increase in production. Equally later on you can eventually change your government to communism and this will provide another 0.6 production per citizen in cities which is fantastic. Now it's a pretty strange thing to show off this exploit but I think probably the easiest way to 
just showed off would be to select a science here like education which says it's going to take four turns to finish and instead of it taking four turns to finish we're actually just going to build one two three four caravels in one turn so that's exactly what we're going to do one turn remember it says four turns to finish and well bam it's actually just going to take one turn because we just spammed out a bunch of caravels now what you do with these caravels is completely up to you you can use them to create the largest navy in the world and absolutely decimate everything or alternatively you can just delete them it's completely up to you now this entire economy is currently weighted off of the caravel but later units provide even more bonuses the unit you're probably going to want to aim to is either the missile cruiser if your empire is producing enough oil or the aircraft carrier now the aircraft carrier costs 540 production for some of my cities that means it can be done in one turn for other cities it means it can be done in three but remember if we of course stack our civics and our government correctly we can get the production in half and still receive the full benefits now 540 is a nice bonus to have because 25% of 540 production is 135 science meaning this city can produce 135 science so can this so can this so can this and so can this and so can any other city I set up after this one city plonked down right about here could probably have a production of around about 700 thanks to this exploit equally I've been quite tame I only chose to get the pantheon of the fish boats about 54 times this could have been so much more if I'd actually wanted it's very easy to get your pantheon up to around about a hundred and by doing so that means probably each and every single city would be able to build every single thing in this game in one turn and so lo and behold this is one fantastic way of breaking the game what makes it even more overpowered is due to the way the AI calculates your science per turn you aren't actually seen as being a scientific threat because we're technically only making 100 science per turn which yes is technically ridiculous in comparison to the AI if we were actually showing how much science we were making and saying 300 science per turn suddenly the AI would start panicking and trying to form big coalitions against us instead we're scary but not ridiculously scary and then eventually we can pull the old switcheroo and invade them with nuclear bombs whilst they're busy finishing off their horse archers the choice is yours ladies and gentlemen but that's the power of Macedonia but what's that you want to hear more you want more science exploits you think this isn't enough for you you think there's more to be discovered in life well it turns out you're actually right what comes after this ladies and gentlemen is quite possibly the most ridiculous science exploit in civilization 6 be warned there is a very specific way of doing this and if you get it wrong your computer will crash repeatedly whilst trying out this exploit and trying to min max it into being the perfect exploit machine it is i suffered oh so many crashes at the hand of civ 6 i turned down all the graphics i did everything i could but this game it wants to stop you exploiting but i say nay for there's always a way to exploit a game anyway without further ado ladies and gentlemen if you're ready if you've braced yourself Let's jump into a brand new game as Korea. So you join us on turn seven of what is quite possibly the best start you can have for this exploit. We've rolled a standard game as the fantastic Korea with standard difficulty on a continental map. And thankfully we spawn near some tundra. Now, what you want to do for your first city is you want to spawn in a region which has one tile, which is entirely surrounded by tundra. So this tile right here is perfect. You're going to want to save this for later. Equally, one of the best things you can do is beeline your research to the holy site as fast as physically possible and that's a very good way of speeding this entire exploit up equally finding a religious city state and gaining the plus two faith in your capital is another fantastic way of speeding up this exploit our early game moves aren't going to be too exciting it's mostly going to be a lot of ending your turn what you're definitely going to want to rush down is the holy site now this entire exploit hinges upon the holy site and the pantheon which provides a plus one bonus for each adjacent tundra tile meaning if we were to put a holy site here get just one iteration of that pantheon this holy site would immediately have plus six faith per turn which is great that's fantastic but we need more than that and so we're going to be stacking that exploit a lot more than just once now eventually you'll get to a turn for us it was turn 19 of the game where upon achieving 25 faith points the game wants you to choose a pantheon now this is normally the point where you'd want to drop down your save and get this exploit done instead we're not going to do that because if you were to pull off this exploit to the maximum of its potential and get your pantheon duplicated let's say 50 times then if you were to do that and then try and place down the holy site the game won't ever let you place down the holy site and will instead crash as soon as you try and select to build a holy site so instead you're going to want to put off choosing your pantheon by simply hitting shift enter and forcing the game to end your turn now this will make the game a little bit upset but honestly it doesn't matter it's necessary trust me so every time the choose pantheon option comes up shift enter let it go away until you get that holy site finished now it's turn 21 ladies and gentlemen and we're ready
ready to pull off this exploit. We've finally managed to research our holy site and so we've started the actual construction of our holy site right here. This is once again the perfect spot. Now building it here, it actually provides no bonuses whatsoever. The only way it's going to provide bonuses is if we choose our pantheon. Now just to once again explain how this exploit works, simply when it comes to choosing your pantheon, select the pantheon you want to duplicate. In our case, we're going to try and duplicate a settler in our capital to increase our growth. Then click found pantheon and then immediately hit escape as soon as you click this button. By doing so, we've just duplicated that pantheon three times and as a result, we've ended up with three settlers for free in our capital. We're also going to do the same and get around about four builders to go along as well. Fantastic. We've got four builders to go along with our free settlers. That's lovely. Now then finally is the very important pantheon which you're going to want to make sure you nail the dance of the aurora make sure you drop down a save before attempting any of this because this is the pantheon which everything hinges upon so select plus one faith from adjacent tundra tiles and get ready to spam ladies and gentlemen so found and escape found and escape and repeat i'm going to be here for a long time i'm afraid because i need this a lot you have to kind of calculate in your mind that each time you do this your empire gains six science so that's how you have to justify this oh Oh god, I beansed it. I beansed it by pressing escape far too early. Right, that's fine. If that happens, simply escape and load your previous save up. One eternity later. Oh my god, I did it. Okay, we've actually done it. Good god. Um, I think that's the most I've ever pulled off that exploit. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> I went back, I sat down, I decided to do the Pantheon again, and um, lo and behold, we founded our Pantheon a lot, like a ridiculous amount. I'm gonna have to hold down my auto clicker to end the amount of times we founded our bloody Pantheon. Oh my god, okay. So the reason you have to build the holy site first is because if we'd waited to build the holy site after, the game just crashes. We need to actually get this holy site under construction so, so the game doesn't have to think about the amount of faith it's meant to actually give us. I mean, just look at how long our empire's history is. It starts pretty simply. Yes, we found our city. Yes, villagers bring a gift as they join our civilization. Very nice. And then, oh, what's this? We did. We founded our first pantheon. And then we founded our first pantheon. And then we founded our first pantheon. And then we founded our first pantheon. And then, Jesus Christ, we founded a lot of pantheons. I mean, make your mind up, Korea. Surely one of these pantheons would have been fine, but apparently no. So 177 pantheons later, we find ourselves with one very perfectly balanced game. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen here. I think there's a chance this is it. We've just completely beans the game and it actually is no way of functioning from this point on. Anyway, let's get some more settlers sent out and about on this world. Yeah, honestly, I have no idea if the game's even going to function after we get this holy site down. I think there's a chance the game could just crawl to a halt and say, right, no, you've had enough fun. Please, Biff, stop. Stop doing this. Okay. Civ 6 could only handle so much. But no, I will always give it more. I'm sorry, Civ 6. So with our free settlers, we're just going to kind of spread them out because I want to kind of optimize our science victory and get the science victory as fast as possible, I'm more than happy to get a couple of other cities set up because even if they're not going to be producing a ridiculous amount of science, the small amount of science they're going to be adding to my empire will eventually make a small difference. Even if it's just plus 50 science per turn, that's still pretty decent and Korea is more than able of actually outputting something of that size. Now the one downside with this glorious exploit is that it means in all of my future cities I can't actually build a holy site because if I was to just so much as press this button because the game knows there's a position where it can put this holy site here, it's just going to crash immediately because a holy site here would produce, I don't know, 400 faith per turn and anything over 50 causes the game to chug. Anything over about 200 causes your game to just immediately fan or snap itself out of existence, uninstall itself from your floppy drive and just drown itself in a vat of tea. We don't want that to happen, of course. And there we go, our first holy site is produced and oh my god, what a marvel it is. Immediately our empire has gone from having two faith per turn to suddenly producing 1,000. This holy site with an adjacency bonus provides 1,027 faith per turn. Okay, this is it. This is going to be the science speed run we've been looking for. Immediately, we're not going to worry about much faith stuff going on. That's going to take a while to get up and running. Now, what is important in order to get our science online as fast as possible is to get this city doing holy prayers and fast. Holy prayers basically mean our faith production is increased even more, which is necessary when we're producing a 1,000 faith 
per turn. Now with these holy site prayers, hopefully we should gain ourselves back into some positive faith per turn very soon. It will take a while though. And fantastic, our capital city has finished its holy site prayers and as a result we are now generating a ridiculous amount of faith per turn and we're back into positive faith. What we're going to want to do is just buy up as many great scientists as we can on the spot. Sadly we're going only able to buy three great scientists but I think it's great scientist number four which is going to be very important for us. Now immediately we have three great scientists and absolutely nothing to do with them so uh, feel free just to spread them out across your empire because you're not going to be able to touch them for quite a while I'm afraid. Okay it looks like it's great scientist number five is the one we're looking for and there we have it a great scientist is discovered Hildegard of Bingen. Now Hildegard she was often regarded as the greatest woman of her time. She's a very important great scientist across history and of course she existed in the medieval era. Now as you can guess we're not in the medieval era at the moment in fact it's 2500 BC and consequently the medieval era is not going to happen for a very bloody long time. And this is it ladies and gentlemen the turn where we can buy Hildegard oh yes a fantastic thing because next turn is when everything's going to go wrong. Now when it comes to science from this point on it doesn't matter what we research in fact we might as well just hit the end of the tech tree and let things happen because the game is now over from this point. Now if we were to research the final tech of the game it would take us 283 turns from this point to research the final tech in the game. Hildegard of Bingen however is going to revolutionize science as we know it. So Hildegard go over to the holy site and activate your effect. Now remember it still says science per turn 9.1 but don't worry everything from now on is going to get very funky. And there we have it ladies and gentlemen 1087 science per turn. An absolute ludicrous quantity of science which means every single tech we can make in one turn. The reason why this is the case even though the final techs in the game cost 2000 science and we're only producing 1000 is because of a overflow error with the lower sciences. Because these techs only cost 50 science we're building up a massive backlog of science which gets plowed into a later tech. So when we produce 1087 science and this takes 50 science 1030 of that science is put to the side for the next technology and that pile just gets bigger and bigger and it even has a small inflation happening on top of it meaning even though this tech over here is so complicated it's going to take over 2000 science to make next turn we should be able to research that tech in one turn so now becomes the incredible race where we try and win the game at a ridiculous speed oh this is going to be good fun and there we have it one turn later and every single tech in the game is now a one turn research ladies and gentlemen oh we've done it we have done it oh fantastic nuclear bombs one turn research it's 2300 bc but this is just the way the world works we're going to out tech the bloody universe just watch me every single thing we now do in this game is going to be faster than every other civilization and we're going to have the technology to back it all up and it's going to be good ah finally the colonial simulator i wanted and also don't forget when the golden era rolls around uh, we're going to immediately go into a absolutely revolutionary golden age it's going to be ridiculous anyway now we have our great campus built we can actually spam out all of these great scientists we just had lying around not sure what all of them do some of them just give a random bunch of techs that's fine or do you give free random technologies a boost i mean the boosts don't actually matter to us anymore because of the amount of technology we're producing but you know you might as well have it also we can hire pingala over here who provides a plus 15 percent science bonus so we can just slap him down in our capital and it's going to go from producing 1000 science to even more than 1000 science if you can even imagine such a thing and whilst we're here let's also hire our legendary great merchant he looks great fun this great merchant in particular is amazing Cleus basically duplicates a luxury item and of course out of all of the luxury items we see around us am i going to choose the salt well i'm a salty individual am i going to choose the olives well i mean they're disgusting but what about this tea luxury resource is that a yorkshire tea kettle i see right there that honestly <laughs> maybe it is i need to contact the developers did they put that in just for me because i keep breaking their games is this a form of appeasement if so it's working and go on Kalias, come on give us the tea oh there we go great person activated double tea i love that i love a good bit of tea fantastic that's going to make the capital very happy and we can basically just pick and choose our favorite great people from this massive list of great persons could also just hire a great prophet i mean we might as well have a religion religion would be good fun okay come on simon peter the most generic sounding great prophet in the world make us a religion and there we go we've got our religion set up so let's create our religion oh here we go the perfect religion the line equals balanced now as you can see the line is quite obviously not balanced and so is this bloody game <laughs> 
Oh, but I love it nonetheless. Now, immediately, I'm going to go for the work ethic religion bonus because this provides us with plus one percentage of production per each citizen following this religion, which is very useful. And then also a meeting house for increased production is also very useful. Well, bam, our perfectly balanced religion is set up. Now, the biggest downside of my mischievous gameplay shenanigans is my ridiculous rate of tech up forces the barbarians in the game to become very much overpowered because the barbarians are put on par with the technology of the leading tech boy. And as we are by far the leading tech dudes, the barbarians in 2000 BC are horsemen. Horsemen appear in the classical era. All of the AIs in the game are currently still in the ancient era. I mean, poor Robert the Bruce of the Scottish Empire here is producing five science. We are producing 1,101 science. A fair bit more than him. Oh god, what have I done? <laughs> I love this game, I really do. Oh, and of course, Pengala has established himself in our capital and we are now producing 1,200 science. I wondered why our science was suddenly going up at ridiculous rates. Fantastic. I'm going to quickly sort out this plantation so I can start harvesting tea. I know it's one turn wasted on technology, which technically we don't need because irrigation is not actually in the final line. It's just a branching tech. But in my heart, irrigation is one of the most important techs in the game. After all, it gives us bloody tea. But hey, in 54 turns, we'll have finished the game, so it matters little. Oh, the world enters the classical era. Oh, it's 1680 BC. This is good. I'm very excited. It's very interesting that the world's entered the classical era because we're actually in the Renaissance era. We've finished the classical era, but nonetheless, the world has just entered the classical era. Oh, goodness. Let's make our dedication. Ooh, this is a fun one. Commercial hubs can gain gold adjacency and they provide bonuses to science, which is, you know, acceptable, but we're kind of perfect when it comes to all forms of science. Instead, we're just going to allow it so that we can buy civilian units with faith, because that means I can just buy out a ridiculous ton of builders. Oh, yes, fantastic. Matthias has declared a surprise war on us. Well, I have a fun surprise for him too, which is that we have a great engineer who's just going to immediately build massive fort walls upon a city, and by doing so, decimate any form of invasion. Thanks, Hungary. Oh, Hungary, you've got a fun surprise coming. Now, interestingly, the Hungarian AI is under the belief that a warrior is able to capture a builder. That's because normally builders do not have this much speed, but because of how far I am advanced in the game, my civilian units can traverse terrain much better than his can, and we're able to basically teleport a worker back and forth across the map, dodging every single enemy along the way. Oh, and we get to pick a new government. Fantastic. I think we'll go for the Classical Republic for those fantastic bonuses. Now, even though it's 1400 BC, I've managed to spawn Isaac Newton, who's going to build the world's first university in 1400 BC. I know, Isaac Newton probably wasn't around in 1400 BC, or if he was, he was using the powers of tea to time travel, which honestly, I wouldn't put past him. Oh, there we have it. We've discovered Rifling. This is it. Finally. Oh, perfect. How much does it actually cost to buy a ranger? Quite a lot. My goodness. Okay. 1,500 gold. Four. Nonetheless, I'm going to make the entire process easier by just buying a musketman. It will handle the job of invading the Hungarians very easily. All right, go musketman, go. You have a water fight, my friend. Oh, here we have it. Oh, it's Musketman versus Warriors. The first unit in the game versus a very mid-placed unit in the game. And you know what, let's activate our lovely great scientist as well to get some boosts in technologies which don't particularly matter. And what's this? Scripture plus 100% holy site adjacency bonus. Um, is this going to work? Is this going to break the game? Confirm policies, are we sure the agenda? Oh, it's 2,800 science. <laughs> no game. I'm pretty sure that is enough science to go all the way through the ancient ancient, classical, and medieval era in one turn if the game allowed us to. Sadly, it doesn't. My god, this is ridiculous. Anyway, it's time for the fun combat to start. Let's see how musketmen perform against warriors. Oh, the steel by Korea sets the world on the stage of the modern era in 1040 BC. Oh, Korea, you've done it again. This is what happens when you let your average Korea player get away with just spamming out science buildings for the entire game. Oh, and this is it, the perfect balance. Musketman versus warrior. Go! Okay. Okay, that was um, pretty easy, but how did that one dude survive? How? There are four men with guns versus one guy with none. Now, the year is 675 BC, 600 years before Baby Jibus is created, and interestingly, the Koreans, we have musketmen. In fact, we don't just have musketmen. Musketmen are the only infantry I have lying around, which is why we have musketmen. But in our cities, we actually have some even more crazy 
units. We've discovered bloody helicopters and destroyer ships and aircraft carriers. I know, it's absolutely stupid, but hey, we've done it. Anyway, let's take the city of Pex using only a musketman. Bearing in mind the city has walls, we really shouldn't be able to do this, but you know, we can. 89 health per attack, why not? God, I love how perfectly balanced this game is. Oh yes, a nuclear fission has been discovered in 650 BC. Mmm. Ah, can't wait for all that clean energy we're going to be discovering. Oh my goodness, musketman, you're almost dead. But no, it turns out you can take the city. Fantastic. Pex is ours. Oh, we've done it. Keep the city? Sure, why not? Let's keep that city. Mr. Musketman, you've done a fantastic job, but your work is not over, I'm afraid. Now, for the first time in this game, we've actually been able to gain access to oil. And what that means is next turn, we can make our musketman and turn him into an infantryman instead, which is much more effective at defeating everything. And fantastic. Oh, lovely musketman has just been upgraded to the first ever infantryman in the entire world. With a melee strength of 70, we're going to be using just one boy and a gun to invade the entirety of the Hungarian Empire, because for some reason you can. Oh, and fantastic, it's 550 BC and Korea has entered the information era. Lovely stuff indeed. And we can finally change our government from a classic republic to a monarchy. There we go, first monarchy in the world. Oh, yeah, we're basically roughly only slightly ahead of time when it comes to our government policies. Everything else is just completely stupid. Now, immediately we're going to change what we're building in our capital to the legendary Grandmaster's Chapel. The reason being the Grandmaster's Chapel allows this city in particular to buy any land units with faith. Now, naturally, we have a metric ton of faith, so this is perfect for us. All right, anyway, Mr. Fantastic Infantry Dude, it's time for you to waltz into the Hungarian capital of Buda. Anyway, it's time for us to attack the major city of Buda with our single infantry dude. Um, really, this shouldn't be achievable. Infantrymen should not be attacking cities. Well, in fact, anyone shouldn't really be attacking cities. So it's turn 500 BC, and in fantastic news, we've set up the city of Busan. Now, we could start producing electricity here, but instead, no, no, no. We're going to start mining up aluminium, one of the most important strategic resources in the game for us. It's going to be very important to get our economy going. And oh no, some bad things have happened. The fantastic city of Pex, which I managed to steal from Hungary, basically decided to rebel because it was so far away from us. And by rebelling, um... <laughs> this is it's caused a bit of a predicament because it's consequently spawned mechanized infantry which we don't stand a chance of defeating um neither does hungry to be fair so they're never getting their city back we're just gonna have to wait until we get our grandmaster's chapel online before you can then pull off our world conquest victory anyway sorry hungry you need to give me more than just gold after your silly attack on me oh and the city of Aya rebelled from scotland and then for some reason decided to join us which is fine i mean it's a garbage city but hey it has uranium oh my god is that a giant death robot. <gasps> We're gonna get a giant death robot. Oh my god, it's happening. We're still in the classical era. Yes, the giant death robot has been completed. How far are we to finishing the tech tree? It's turn 100 and we've almost done it. We are seven turns away from finishing the tech tree. Fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted. <gasps> there we go. Korea has entered the future era in 375 BC. So in 375 BC, uh, Korea has managed to overtake where humanity currently is in 2020. Well done, Korea. Oh, and there we go there's smart materials and then we've got the off-world mission coming up oh we've almost done it the tech tree is almost complete oh now it's future tech time oh lovely and this is it is this the final tech in the game we have done it future tech it's going to take one turn oh but most importantly our capital city has finally gained the ability to build units with faith meaning we can now build rocket artillery for free <laughs> Right, this is it. Even though we technically have a military strength of only 85, so technically the same military strength as Scotland, our one rocket artillery is single-handedly going to give us the city of Pex. And now there we go, in 200 BC we've built the world's first working attack helicopter, so we'll be sending this out into the world. And we can probably invade cities with attack helicopters, it makes sense. And there we go, we've discovered exploration, which has apparently put the world in the Renaissance era. Finally. <laughs> Oh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The war is happening now. We've discovered Pex, and with one single helicopter, we're going to be able to take the city in one go. How much damage is it going to do to the helicopter? None. There we go. Pex is ours. Glorious. And we've even got a modern armor tank to back it up. Come on, tank. I need to take the capital city. That'll be good fun. Yeah, so we now have the largest military in the world. It is going to be completely unopposed and has no physical counter. Anyway, let's keep this city. No idea what we're going to do with it, but, you know, it's a good laugh to have them. When our capital city we might as well build a giant death robot or 
<gasps> the Manhattan Project. Now that's a good use of time. You know what? We're going to throw our helicopter also into their capital now. There we go. Burn down those walls. The capital will be ours. Oh no. They just used archers to shoot at my glorious massive attack helicopter. How dare they? Right. Instead, um, our rocket artillery is going to cause total wall damage to the enemy capital. Wabam. Okay, it is now defenseless. And now we're just going to wander on in. Wabam. Your capital is now ours. That was easy. Let's keep that city lovely. So they've probably only got one city left up here. We're going to definitely be able to deal with that with just these units. This is nice and easy. Oh, and of course a helicopter can snipe their lovely settler that they just left wandering around. Thank you very much, game. This is very generous of them to roll out a great general just for us. And they've been hiding the city away up here all this time. Anyway, it's time for them to share. Meanwhile, my massive rocket artillery just decimated an archer. Let's send up our modern tank and see if it can take the city in one go. Oh no, this archer here just shot my helicopter. It did free damage. Whatever are we going to do to our poor helicopter? Anyway, um, let's send our helicopter over to kill this archer. Other helicopter, please take this here. Thank you very much. And finally, our modern tank. Please take the new capital of Hungary in one go. And there we go. Goodbye, Hungary. You are now gone. Fantastic. All of their cities are now ours. Technically, they add into our science production and just other forms of production, which is lovely. Oh, and Scotland is saying that they absolutely love our civilization. Thank you, Scotland. I think that's the first time I've ever received a compliment from Scotland. Anyway, time for me to choose my golden age. Ooh, what are we going to do? Buy civilian units with faith? Uh, honestly, the rest of this is just completely and utterly useless. Kind of have already won the game. Now, we have technically completed the world's first circumnavigation pretty late on it in the game for my liking but alternatively our empire is doing pretty well we're just currently doing operation ivy which is going to allow us to build thermonuclear devices as opposed to just nuclear devices oh yes humanity has realized its dream of flight for the first time as the jet bomber of korea takes to the skies oh i mean you can probably guess what i'm going to be doing with this bad boy it can kind of air attack just about anywhere in the world and immediately kill it but we're going to be equipping this guy with a, a very special device and now after discovering thermonuclear devices we're going to try and build one in our capital it's going to take us eight turns to do lovely stuff and because of our ridiculous tech basically whenever scotland settles a new city which isn't next to their capital it just immediately flips to our control like haddington over here which is a fun situation to be in anyway our capital's built its first thermonuclear device which is fantastic news for everyone who's korean and pretty bad news for just about every other being on the planet anyway it's time to start a massive catastrophic global war by dropping a thermonuclear bomb right on edinburgh on Honestly, might as well declare a surprise war. Wabam! Let's go! It's nuke time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's gonna be good. Goodbye, Scotland. You're probably not going to be too happy after this. Yes, Edinburgh has practically completely and utterly fallen. Let's power drop our way in. There we go. Roll the spec ops in. Get those tanks marching on Aberdeen too. Bam! Glorious victory. Bring in the helicopters and the artillery. There we go. We're gonna start marching on in. Anyway, helicopter, please take Aberdeen. Fantastic. Right, we're going to take Sterling now. That's gonna be ours. Fantastic. And we're going to do an air attack and immediately wipe out all of the health of Roxburgh. And then I think we just roll our tank into Edinburgh. Fantastic. Edinburgh is now ours. Lovely stuff. This is going to be one of the fastest wars ever. Anyway, let's take the final city of Scotland. Somehow we didn't manage it. In we go. Roxburgh is ours. Goodbye, Scotland. Another sieve to fall to the mighty Korean Empire. Anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I've been the Spiffing Brit. If you have indeed enjoyed today's video, please do give it a like. It does always take quite a while to get these exploits up and running. After all, I had to play an entire game of Civilization 6 and farm a ridiculous amount of faith points like a 100,000 faith. I know, it's crazy. But yes, this has been one fantastic game. If you have indeed enjoyed, a like is always appreciated and why not consider subscribing to see more of these very strange videos in your sub feed. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our glorious patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Each and every one of you are majestic. Thank you very much. And hey, if you're wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this glorious glorious specimen of a video hand chosen by myself be perfect for you on screen now trust me you're gonna absolutely love this one anyway i'll see each and every one of you in the next one have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now